Welcome, church family, to our Friday night moments with Pastor David and Marie. And, uh, you know, every week I look forward to seeing you guys. I know you guys, I don't see you really, but you see us. And so I enjoy this time together. We have Pastor David and Marie joining us with this, as always, uh, this Friday evening. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. Good, good. How How's the week been? Nice and quiet. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's been good. You know, busy. Yes. We're always busy. Even in the midst of all that's going on, we're always keeping busy. So I, I we're doing all right. We're trying to, get to see the, uh, we're seeing it even in like with the church attendance, we're seeing it. it it's kind of, you, we can't put a thumb on her or, a, a, you know, like a regularity on it. It's just, it's, ebb and flow it yeah. seems like you know i think that people right now john are simply afraid mm -hmm. they're afraid they don't know what to do and they don't know what to believe mm. and i can't help but be believe and this is my personal belief but i think it's correct that the um that's part of what the enemy wants the enemy loves confusion satan loves confusion god is not mm -hmm. the god of confusion but the enemy is. He creates chaos and he uses fear. Mm -hmm. And so I, I see it as a, having spiritual components. This uh, this Sunday I'll be sharing uh, on the weapons of our warfare. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not carnal but mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And that's what Paul said in Second Corinthians 10. And I believe that there is a a uh, strategy of diversion and confusion and it includes the things we see of violence right. and fears of disease. Mm -hmm. And the church has a tendency of going with whatever the world says. Not to say that there is no wisdom in, in taking care of your health. Of course there is. And, and all of that is just that I think sometimes because there's so much um, so many voices that are shouting for our attention mm -hmm. and a lot of the believers don't know their Bibles very well. Mm -hmm. They're not reading them. Many are not really, uh, not to the degree that at this time probably would demand that they do. And in the lack of fellowship, the avoiding of fellowship and all the other things, I, I think what we're seeing right now in the church is really a, a, a critical moment that not everybody in the church is aware of or rising up to. That causes me great concern, but it also reveals to me the the task at hand. Right. And also, you know, the necessity of prayer, because quite a number of people seem to forget that prayer is one of our cardinal weapons in spiritual warfare. Right. And so I, I would think that some need to remember the power of God, the God who answers prayer. So... What are we seeing right now? We're seeing uh, a flux, a uh, fluctuation. Mm -hmm. People are coming, some aren't. Come, They come one time, they don't want to come again because of fear sometimes. And and I think we're also seeing uh, people's, uh, in general, where their, where their faith really is, where, where their commitments really are. And so I don't expect a member, it's every member of this church to be here. They never were anyway except on Easter. They have their schedules, and, and I respect the fact that some have to work on Sunday. Some can't come on a Wednesday. You know, we can't be as committed to everything as we'd like to be, and many people would like to be more committed, but they can't. Right. And I, I love them for that. I, God bless them. And uh, those who would be here but can't, you know, our heart and our love and our prayers are with them. But those who, who are not coming simply because they're uh, dealing with Whatever, you know, I, I really pray for them, too, that the Lord will will strengthen them and make them uh, make them value the things that perhaps they can value if they took the time to. But I especially thank the Lord for the online presence that we do have, because I didn't go online so that so that I'd have thousands and thousands of viewers. The only reason we went online is to try and minister to our church. And so I'm grateful that we have people on Friday who are choosing to, to watch our broadcast, you know, and uh, getting to know Marie and me on a different mm -hmm. level, a more personal level. Uh, I, I like that. And so, you know, we're, we're in that season, you know, but um, 
it's, we've got to keep our eyes on the Lord, and I want to keep looking up, you know, because my redemption does draw nigh. And it's drawing nearer and nearer. It, it seems is. like we're getting every day closer and closer to that. Amen. I wake up in the morning, it's like, okay, Lord, we're one day closer to seeing you. Amen. You know, one more day, one more, Amen. one more day closer. Amen. You know, I've I've been blessed uh, discussing different topics of marriage with you guys, with both of you guys, and we've been discussing at great lengths the different challenges that marriages are facing, uh, especially in the Christian marriage. We we've discussed the dangers in the Christian marriage of neglecting one or the other, not respecting, not loving one another, uh, and uh, and the husband and wife not giving to one another the things that are needed, spiritually, especially in the Christian marriage. We've looked at that. We've discussed the pitfalls that we discussed last week, the three different uh, areas. It was money, uh, pride, and uh, and women, right? Or intimacy. intimacy. Intimacy, yes. And how those are uh, can destroy a marriage. And then we also looked at how do you know when a, a marriage is in danger? We looked at those in great length. So I want to switch directions a little bit. And uh, and want to hear more uh, from you both about the blessings in your marriage. You know, what I thought that was interesting is one of the guys was sharing with me that uh, you had shared something. I don't know what it was specifically that you both did. And they were like, wow, we, we never knew that about Pastor David and Marie. Early on stuff, you know, and, and I think mm -hmm. they really appreciated that mm -hmm. and, and were able to learn things about you guys. And so this evening, I'd like to ask some questions that are centered on that. Uh, and I would like first to ask if you both can share about the blessings that have come your way because of your marriage to one another. I do have any. I do. <laughs> well, first of all, had I met my husband, I, I don't know if I would have been saved. Mm, that's a huge blessing. So that in itself, I just happened to be asked to go to a Bible study, and I showed up. And he was, that's when, and he began to teach the Bible study uh, for his brother. And, um, and he gave me an invitation to go, and I thought, why not? Well, I have nothing else to do, why not? And, um, and I, I went, and wow. uh, I, I, I heard the gospel that, that, that day. And um, so I wouldn't be sitting here. Would you ever thought, Marie, that mm -hmm. going to that Bible study, you were going to meet your husband? No, because I was I was really a devout Catholic. I mean, to the core. I went to church. I went to com uh, I uh, went to confession, and I always told the same sins over and over again to the <laughs> priest. And and, and and we had to have time. You know, it, it was just so predictable. Every, 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 the whole, just going to, into confession and all that for me. It was so a routine. It was, it was a routine, routine exactly. Yeah. It was the a routine. And I, I, I was empty. I was empty. And, I, and, and it was the Lord that drew me uh, because I would normally would have said, no, I'm not, I, I'm a Catholic. I, I'm not going to, I'm sorry, but I, I, uh, I, I don't want to go to a Bible study, but but for whatever, I really believe the Spirit of God just drew me there mm. that evening. Wow, and that's and the big blessing that's come from well, that. Well, and it became, it, that evening it began to change my life. Uh, I really heard God's Word. Uh, the Bible be started becoming real because I'd never read a Bible. Mm. We had a Bible, but... But we never read it. It was a big Bible. Mm. It's one of those yeah, big, big right? yeah, yeah. But but I never read it. So Oh, what a blessing. Mm -hmm. but, Pastor, what about for you? Uh maybe it's even like more of a takeaway of some of the blessings that you've had being married to Marie and that you've seen in your life. That can even be counted maybe even tangible in some ways. I would say that the um, iron sharpens iron scripture is very real with Marie and me mm -hmm. because being of such different backgrounds in terms yes. of our way we were raised and environment and temperaments, um, Marie has served to 
to be a person that rubs off the the rough edges of my life and has over the years had the influence on me to to awaken a kindness in me that I always wanted but never really had and um she's awakened in me um a desire to be uh, not just a a good christian but but a good leader um there are a variety of things that that you learn from your wife that that uh, idea of scripture that says the two become one mm-hmm. well marie has filled up those gaps in me that that were surely um needing to be filled I've done the same for her, I would yes. think. I've, oh, I've helped absolutely. her to become stronger oh, in some areas and all. And um, and she's made me, um, through through our marriage, want to be um, an honorable person. She's encouraged me to be a hard worker. Um, and she's blessed us with uh, children. And those children have helped me on a personal level to to learn to express love to others um, beyond my wife and um, and all the lessons you learn from raising children. So, yeah, the word of the Lord speaks concerning the fact that there are gaps in our life and um, that, that yeah. we do become that one flesh and and we, we do learn from one another and we do encourage one another and... Mm-hmm. And so I, I would say that I know this for a fact, and every human being, everybody who's married can say the same thing. I would not be the person I am right now if it were not for the person I'm married to. And that, that's obvious. I mean, had I married somebody other than Marie, I would have adjusted to her the way she is, how she thinks, how she feels, what she does. I wouldn't be the same person I am right now. I would be a different man. Perhaps a woman I might have married could have been a stronger-willed woman, so I'd have had a different way of leading and all. So I'm very, very grateful for the person God gave me because in in relationship with her, uh, I become the person I want to be. And I wouldn't want to be any other kind of person other than I am because of her influence. And um, so, yeah... From the day I met her, from I can remember the day she walked in. I can remember my first impression of her as she walked past me from the door and sat down, and and bits of the conversation she had with her roommate, and and a phone call that came in, and hearing her uh, on that phone speaking to a man who wanted to ask her on a date, and her not coming the next Monday because she went out with this guy, mm-hmm. and then she mm-hmm. came back to the Bible study the week after, mm-hmm. and never left. I've never, she has been with me that way since the um, second week of meeting her. Wow. Yeah, so we haven't been apart uh, for all those years, John. We became uh, romantically interested in one another mm-hmm. later, mm-hmm. but we yeah. haven't been apart from yeah. one another since then, yeah, since November of 1974. It was truly a divine appointment. It really was. It really, really was. Mm-hmm. It really was. I was in college. I could have gone different ways in, in my life. I could have been way out there. Who knows? I don't know. Right. Right. But it, it was a divine. That that night was a divine appointment. And um, I've been blessed with a man who who took me under his wing and, and, and encouraged me and loved me and, and read the word to me and and uh, has given me children, yeah. and um, and in Christ, which is precious, and um, he's taught me a lot. You know, he is my mentor. Yeah. He has been my mentor all these years, and I'm thankful. I'm thankful for him. I I, I love him. No, thanks for saying it. Well, <laughs> I haven't said it in years. Oh. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> you know, Pastor, you you both you said something interesting that that caught my attention. If you would have married anybody else, and you use the example of being strong willed, then your life more than likely would have been shaped around that, right? But to think that the Lord knew that you would guys would be here going almost on your what? 49th year in ministry 
next month? For me, it's, um, oh, no, you've said, I started teaching in 1973. Okay. So ministry as a teacher, 47, 47. 47 years. So for for the 47 years that the Lord knew that 47 years later in terms of ministry, that you'd be both be sitting here today, that he knew, and this is what blows my mind, that he knew Marie's, her nature mm-hmm. and her and her giftings and her character yeah. were going to shape you yeah. into the shepherd for you to be, to oversee this. Mm-hmm. And that that that's amazing to think that. Mm-hmm. That God used those qualities from you, Marie, because when you said that, that, that made I thinking, wow, if Marie was strong-willed, would 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 there be a Calvary Chapel Chino Valley, or would there be uh, any of the ministries that you had, the Bible study, you know, that started off many years ago? What would that would that have taken place? Maybe no. I right. would say no, and I'll tell you why. The only thing that brought me to Chino was her. <laughs> Bottom wow. line, you know, my 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 brother was yeah. living in Ontario, and um, I I was only concerned with the one. I, the, the Lord taught me something, John. Let me share something that might help in our conversation, and that was um, Jesus was one who was, and this is what I've learned from from my studies and all, and my ministry life. Jesus was interested in men and multitudes, individual men and multitudes. He would feed the 5,000, but he would seek out the one lost sheep. Mm -hmm. He has ministry like that, right? And so for me, ministry was, was was never, especially at the beginning, about multitudes. It was about individuals. And so my brother Frank got saved, and he needed discipling. And I lived in Norwalk, which is a 40 minute drive or so from Norwalk to where he was living in Ontario at the time. So it was for the one. It wasn't for a church. It wasn't for even a girl. It was for the one right. that I came. I came for him so I could minister to my brother. Sorry. And that's how I still am. I think the one needs to be cared for. I can't always do that. God gave me more than the one. So Jesus cared for the one, but he cared for the multitudes. So there are 5,000 plus who need to be fed. So he gave them the word. He gave them a meal. So I've seen that in ministry. I, I am more attracted um, on, on the feeling level to the, to the person in need and... But I'm thrilled when God gives me the opportunity to speak to the larger group, too. So Jesus did both. He would speak to the one, you know, to the Matthew. Mm -hmm. But then later on, he'd speak to Matthew's party. Mm -hmm. He would speak to the one Mm -hmm. and the many. And one is not better than the other. Because I can, as a pastor, I learned this too, John, that I can influence one life who can be an influencer of many. Because as you, you've been with me, I think you've seen this, uh, perhaps if not, you've heard me speak of it, how I've been at pastor's conferences and, and someone will approach me who is a pastor of a church. And I get letters sometimes of this nature who will say, uh, you, I've never met you personally, but I was in Virginia and you gave a men's conference I got saved, and now I pastor a church in Colorado. I've had more than one person say, I have a church here or I have a church there. Um, It happens fairly often, not all the time, but fairly often. And So you never know who you're reaching. You never know. But if you reach one person, Mm -hmm. that person can reach others. Mm -hmm. And so I am not caught up with the desire to only speak to the multitudes because in fact, all ministry is really to one person. Right. One person. Even if there's 5,000, I want to speak to that one person. And that's that's our ministry. Mm-hmm. My wife's the same way. We can speak to, I can speak to numbers of people, but God gave me the ability to make it seem as if I'm only talking to that yeah. one person. 
because that's really what I'm thinking about, frankly, when I'm teaching. It's it's the one person. And so Marie and I together, um, that's what we became. So I, I came to Ontario for one person, for my brother. But God had other things in mind. And that's why this girl here came to a Bible study that she wouldn't have been interested in. I, I mean, she, what she's saying is, is absolutely the Marie I know and I met. Mm -hmm. She only came because she was invited mm -hmm. and nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. And certainly wasn't impressed with me at all. She wasn't impressed with me when she came to the study. She came just because she was invited. It was me who looked at her and knew this is going to be my bride. She didn't have that feeling. She just came and met the Bible study teacher who at that time was 24 years old, you know, just a kid, just sitting there learning to, to communicate. And only there because my brother needed somebody to teach him. But from there, I met a girl from Chino, a, a place to me that was foreign because, you know, those who aren't Californians won't, won't understand this from a Californian perspective. But we, we, who are in L.A. County, we look down on San Bernardino <laughs> County. We, we do. We, it's kind of like podunk, you know. It's like out there in cow country. I mean, why would I want to go out to the it, fly capital of the world, it, right? It, well, it was and the, it the was, largest, remember? yeah, the yeah. capital of dairies in the, the world. In so, the world. Yes. Yeah. so why would I come out here? I mean, I have no interest in it. So the Holy Spirit used the hook of my brother to to help me to develop a uh, presence in this area and then the hook of a young lady whose family is, is entrenched in Chino, uh, a little Chino girl. Marie's only been out of Chino in her whole life for about a year and a half, maybe two at the most, when we moved to Roland Heights and then at my parents' house. Mm -hmm. And then we moved back to Ontario. Mm -hmm. And she's never really been out of this area that much. That's right. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I would never have thought of coming here. I mean, the wages <laughs> of sin is chemo. Right? <laughs> <laughs> if I want to come out of here, but, you know. But of course, I love this, this area. I love the people here. I love the city. And I'm very, very entrenched here. And I've been given opportunities in the last several years to consider at least the possibility of uh, leaving this church to pastor in other place in other places two in particular come to mind and um, it was Marie's influence at first that initially um, made me rethink any offers that may come in the future because when I was an assisting pastor and mm -hmm. I was told by the senior pastor that I don't have pastoral skills and that uh, that he was releasing me from being an assistant. In that conversation, I had said to him, there's only one thing I do know, and that is I'm called by God. It's just not here. Mm. And I resigned, and I gave my two-week notice, and, and I was now without church and without a ministry. And I told Marie, because I have a love for San Luis Obispo, and Marie doesn't have that much of a love. Of course she doesn't. It wasn't in her background. It was in mine that I developed an, an affection for this, uh, this city. But I had a friend at that time who was working as a manager in a, uh, a bread distribution company. And I told Marie, I said, I could speak to my friend, and he may be able to get me a delivery job where I can work in San Luis Obispo delivering bread and work in the corporate office there or whatever someday, who knows? And I'll never forget, I don't know if you remember or not, but I remember you said to me, you know you're not called to San Luis Obispo. Wow. Yes. Marie said that. She said, honey, wherever you go, we go. But you are not called to San Luis Obispo. Wow. Mm -hmm. Marie told me that. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking at her saying, you're right, I know we're not. Because she said you'd be running from something, you need to stay where God wants you to be. Wow. Mm -hmm. So her influence is, yeah. in, is that deep, you know, because she was right. And, and, I, and all she needed to do was say what was right. And I listened to her, you know, and, and here we are now. You know, we stuck it out. But 
It was because my brother got saved and needed a Bible study, mm -hmm. and it was because God had a little girl that he had in the city of Chino. Mm -hmm. The only thing that would have drawn me to this place at that time, <laughs> and, uh, and I grew to love her, and I grew to love the city. And so I've been very blessed to be able to minister here as long as I have. That's uh, amazing. Mm -hmm. Who who was it that invited you to the study? Was it Frank? Yeah, my brother Frank, Frankie. Yeah, Frankie yeah. did. Oh, because yeah. you guys had they had worked together, right? Yeah, yeah they worked yeah. in the same yeah, office. Yeah, Frankie did. It's amazing to see all yeah. the moving parts that were going on at that time. You come into from Norwalk here. You're invited to a study. Yeah, I uh, worked part time you're there ca at... with a Catholic background. You know, you you were just like you mentioned, it's just ritualistic. Mm -hmm. And then look, uh, that's isn't that... it amazing? You it know, John, when you really think about is. it. I think of it like this, and you can say this with Liv, you can say the same thing. I say this with Marie. I say, just one second before, I didn't know her. Just one second before, the ne next second I met her, and my life was changed. But it was one second before, I didn't know her. I got in a car, I drove to Ontario, I got off the car, I climbed some stairs, I sat on a chair. <laughs> right. You know, I'm there with my brother, there's... Then a couple of people come walking in. Here comes Joni, your roommate, comes uh -huh. walking in. And then Frankie, my brother, had wanted me to meet Marie in the past. He had mentioned her to me. He said that he really loved her. He said, I wish you could meet Marie. You know, and he invited her. So I don't think, obviously, he didn't realize how significant this desire he had for me to know this girl was. Because he didn't, he didn't know that one day she would be her, his uh, sister-in-law. He didn't know that. That's right. He, I mean, he just said, I wish you could meet Marie. She, he says, I love her. She's like Madeline. She reminds me of our sister Madeline. And and Madeline and Marie hit it off. They, they, Madeline brought her to faith in Christ. Yeah, Madeline did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's how that all worked out, yeah. yeah. Just one second. <clears throat> just one second. You didn't know her. You didn't know her. And then you did. Mm -hmm. And for me, and I've never been without her almost, almost since then. And Madeline also kind of mentioned David to me <laughs> in, the, in a cute little way. Yeah. Like, hmm. He'd be a good catch. David would be a good catch. <laughs> Even at that time, Marie, just, did you think of anything when she had said that to you? Mm, kind of. Yeah. I'm here. <laughs> 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 the proof is in the pudding, right? right? I think that, you know, I think that, yeah. tell me if I'm wrong here. I, I, he teased me. He was, yeah. he would tease, and I, yeah. and I teased him back, but I, at first I didn't think anything of it, yeah. to be quite honest. I think she was attracted to that. Just, yeah. I think she was attracted yeah, she, to me yes. as a know-it-all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I had my opinions, and I was not afraid to tell you them. Right, right. And I think she kind of... Because yeah. she'd give me that look like, what? Who do you think you are? <laughs> That's true. She would do that. Who do you think you are? And I'd say, you know, and and it just we just got along, you know, and she'd laugh at that because nobody, nobody spoke to her like that. I did, you know. Yeah, that was... I did. It's a, you know, no and she just liked it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I go. Yeah, That's true. Yeah. And it's so cool to think of, look back and to just to, to see this, to hear this about, I mean, just the, the dynamic of how the Holy Spirit just really brought you guys together through just, uh, and I don't want to say events that were just by chance, but events that were ordained by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That is just one thing. And, and look, that's what fascinates me mm -hmm. about this whole thing. You know, as we talk about the blessings that you have both described in your marriage for one another. How has your relationship to one another complemented you both? You talked about filling in the gaps. Oh, yeah, I think we kind of touched a bit on that. Uh, I can speak, obviously, from my perspective. But uh, I'll, I'll put words into your mouth, and if you want to bounce on and, okay. and talk. Because, um, Marie, you know, people may be noticing this at this time. I probably should mention it. You know, Marie likes to let me talk. I do. She does. I mean, and, and people may think, oh, he doesn't let her talk. Mm -hmm. No, it's the way we are together. She just likes to let me talk, and, and I can sense when she wants to say something, and so that's why I'll just I'll look in her direction because I can sense that there may be something she wants to say. So I would say with Marie that uh, uh, my strength, uh, my strength of holding beliefs that are strong and being willing to, to go to the mat for them if necessary, mm -hmm. 
Uh, she admires that. I would she say that she, she mm -hmm. thinks that's something that, as a man, um, she also, I would say, that uh, my faithfulness to her, that, that she knows that she never has had to worry about another person coming between us. She never has, even my children. She knows that there's only one love for me, and that's yeah, her. That's mm -hmm. true. And that has made her yes. very, very secure. Yes, I would say that. Very secure. And when she needs someone to defend her, you know, that I'll be right there. You know, you don't have to worry about it yourself. I'll take care of this if I have to. She knows that too. Mm -hmm. And she knows that I would I would work myself to the to to the end to make sure she's happy, make sure she's cared for. I think she knows that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Things of those natures, I, I that do. nature. Stuff like that. Yeah, of course. Every um, everything you said is so true. Yes. I trust him with everything. And um, our life has been wonderful. God gave us a wonderful life together and gave us children to, um, that, that uh, yeah, we put up with. <laughs> we love dearly. Um, it's, and and it's, grandbabies. And our wonderful grandbabies, yep. many grandbabies that, that uh, uh, are, are uh, uh, we're just fill, so filled with joy in, in that and, uh, and being with our family and seeing them as they grow. Mm-hmm. How would you say that? Uh, how would you say one another has made you a better person? We're talking about complementing each other in terms of what you were mentioning, Pastor, and, and you, Marie. Uh, what are some of the, if you can please share some of the things that has made each one of you a better person from the other? Marie's kindness. You know, when I was first saved, I was speaking to someone and I said to them, if there's anything I want to become, it's kind. Because anybody who knew me in, in my earlier days would know I wasn't a kind man. Um, direct and unfeeling. Direct and unfeeling. Um, in a way you wouldn't even, you wouldn't recognize. Just, really? Yeah, oh yeah, you wouldn't recognize it. The way, yes, the way that I was, was very hard, very unfeeling, never cried, you know, didn't show emotion, you know, just anger. That's the only thing I'd ever show that I felt comfortable with, um, but never would show love. Didn't even know what that meant, you know, just was very angry. Yeah. And, and I got saved. And when I got saved, I started saying to God, make me kind. Make me kind. Because I wasn't. I was direct and mean. And I met this girl here. If there's a word that I use for her, it's kind. She's very kind. So her kindness towards me, her gentleness towards me, it's something I admire, something I want. So that's that's been, I think the, if there's anything that Marie has really influenced me in, it's, it's that. Because people will say that I have a soft heart, but they didn't know me before. They didn't know me before. And had I met and married someone more aggressive, that was really much more who I, who I am, John. Very competitive. I'll give you an example if I may, um, what I mean. Um, when I played sports, and I played them for years, played sports, I especially loved baseball. But I can still remember, even as a little boy playing Little League baseball, I can still remember that my goal was to be on second base. And if you were in my way, you were going down. I, that's a fact. And I still remember running to second. And it was a force play on second. And I jumped in the air probably about 12 feet from the base. I jumped in the air. And with my knees, I slammed into this kid's side and just knocked him, just knocked him over. And he dropped the ball. That was my goal. And I heard the parents in the, in the stands getting upset at what I had just done. I didn't have a clue why they were upset. Isn't the game supposed to be won? Is an aggression in the on the base paths? Isn't that something that you admire? 
I remember I made the last out in our last game in Little League. I, I grounded out, and it was a, it was it bounced over the over the middle, went over the pitcher. Mm -hmm. I still remember. I was twelve years old, and I was running to first, and I was jogging to first. I was the fastest runner in in our in Little League. You know, I was I was I was very fast, and I didn't even run it out because it was going into center field. I just hit the ball. It was going it was going over the uh, the pitcher. And uh, I, I didn't even run full speed. But the all-star second baseman, Danny, uh, a young man named Danny, Danny got it. He was a good ball player, spun and threw me out by half a step because I didn't hustle. And I grabbed my helmet and slammed it on the ground. And I put my hands on my head. I still remember doing that. And I was crying so loudly and I was so angry that the coach had to come and actually take me off of the field and put me inside the the dugout to comfort me, extremely aggressive, extremely competitive. You don't know me that way, but that's what I was like. And my mother said, you're just a horrible sport. You're a horrible sport. And it would make me upset because isn't, isn't, isn't the game supposed to be won? Aren't you supposed to play as hard as you can and do anything you can to win? That's how I thought. And so when I got saved and went into ministry, God had to kill those things in me, that ambition to try and have the biggest church, to try and be the best known, to try and be the most whatever. He had to kill those things in me. And the way he did it, part of it, is he gave me a good woman, mm -hmm. a good woman who didn't need me to be a bunch of aggressive, weird, mean. She needed a kind man. And that's what God has done over all these years, John. That, 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 that's the man you see now is a person who says, you know what? The Lord's in control. Let's see what he wants to do. Let's see what he wants to do. But as for me, I'm not going to yield to that competitive because it was there and it was very strong. Every once in a while, you see it rise up and I'll be thinking, and I might even say something, I don't, because it, it, it takes a long time for some things to die. But if I were to say that anything in me that has changed at all for the good, it's been it's been Marie's kindness has taught me to be gentle with people, to be understanding, to listen, to care. You know, those things, that's what she's all about. I mean, that's what makes her love me. She, she does that to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she's kind to me. She loves me. She puts up with me. And it shows me what kindness really is. Uh, that's, I would have never known that, Pastor. Oh, see, but I don't see him that in the way he sees himself. I'm not that way I, now. Though. No, no, I mean, saw himself. You know, yeah, no, no, but I even, even. Shut up. When, <laughs> <laughs> even when we were first together, I, I didn't see that. You, you always had a care for people wanting to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. you, you, you always wanted more people to know, and, and the Lord put you in ministry, and, and, and you. Yeah, and my sweetheart. It's just been a blessing. You've been a wonderful pastor to the sheep. Mm. And um but you've always been caring. Oh, you've thank always you, been caring, honey. Don't beat yourself up. I'm not. I'll let you <laughs> <laughs> no, <they're> not too <laughs> big. <laughs> what would you guys say? And and I know there's a lot of it would be hard to pinpoint just one thing on this. But if you can please share some of the things that you love uh, most about your marriage? I, I think we've become one. Uh, I, it, it takes a while for a couple to become one, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And I think we're there. I think we enjoy each other a a, all the time. I, I enjoy just, I can sit next to him on, on the couch and we're fine. We're good. <laughs> you know, we're really a, 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 a content and and I and I look back on the years and and they've been good years. They go by fast. Too fast. Too fast. Too fast. Yeah. You blink and Yeah. Mm. But but yeah, I I I I feel so safe when we're together, when we're us. I really yeah. do. There's just Yeah. Yeah, we um God has been gracious to us in so many ways, John. Mm -hmm. I mean, Marie and I will talk on occasion. When in, in the early days, uh, early days of our marriage, for us, um, you know, I didn't have a, a car that I trusted in terms of its uh, 
mechanicals and and I didn't have money. It wasn't that we were poor, poor, poor. We didn't have extra funds. We didn't have discretionary funds that we could say, oh, let's go out for dinner. We just didn't have that. We didn't have money for vacations and stuff. Uh, I actually really did. Uh, I, we had to work towards having even enough money for an overnight thing. And when we had more children, and th that, that threw vacations out the door. There's really no way that, that we could do that. So we learned how to enjoy each other just in the other simple things, different things, you know, that, uh, that really, I, I would say, uh, re revolved around just us together. And so uh, when we could, maybe we would go someplace, you know, maybe a date or something when we could. A lot of times it was just us, you know, maybe spend time with the kids somewhere, go to a park or go visit family. You know. Well, over time, the Lord blessed me financially. I started being able to breathe better. Now I have discretionary funds that I can use for something different. And, and also being in the ministry, um, God opened doors for me to go places and do things. And as the church grew and as my ministry expanded, um, we were given opportunities to, to visit other places. We went to Israel. The very first time we went to Israel was 1983. Mm -hmm. And it cost at that time $1,050 to go for 10 days. Pastor Chuck invited us to go with him and some of the other pastors. And, and so I remember, John, it, my, my daughter, Anna, would have been, what, mommy, about three? Oh, three months. I can tell you. Months. She was three months. Wow. And so I could remember being in a, um, in a Wednesday night Bible study, and I just was sitting there speaking as I am to you right now. I used to have a handful of people that came to a Bible study, maybe 30 people. And I was sitting there, and, and I just was speaking. I said, oh, by the way, um, I was given an opportunity to go to Israel. And I told this small group of people in our church, I said, I've been given an opportunity to go to Israel. And then I got quiet for a moment, and it was a sincere, just quiet. And I said, you know, I feel that God is, wants me to go to learn about this beautiful land. I said, but you know, I've, I've never been away from Marie. The only time I was ever away from her was when she was giving birth to our babies. It's the only time I've been away from her. I said, and that's been like one, two days or something. I, I'm not used to being away from her. I said, uh, that's going to be hard. And I said it like that. And what was it, about two weeks or so yes, later? Yes, yes. Um, was it David Sines who did this? Yes, one of the Connie people and David. Mm -hmm. They came up to me. They handed me an envelope. They yes. handed me an envelope. And they said to me, Pastor, we took an offering in that little Bible study. We're paying for Marie to go. And we're giving you two hundred dollars of spending money when you go for the first time. And we yes, took my precious. baby Anna, who was three months old, for the first time. We went to Israel. What a blessing! And so we've seen Israel. And then we, then the church continued to grow, and and I've I've been able to take Marie to England and to Germany and to Austria and to Spain and mm -hmm. to Egypt and wow. mm -hmm. you know That's so same. many in South America, you know yes. Mexico. You know various states, yeah. so we've had you know France. We we we've, we've been together in ministry throughout many parts of the Japan. world, Japan, um, and and yet with all of that, um, if you asked us when are we the happiest, well the the answer is when we're together. Mm -hmm. You know wherever that may be, whether it would be. In, in some foreign country, which we've been privileged so much to do, or whether it's sitting on our couch at home drinking our coffee in the morning mm -hmm. and fighting over the last sweet. <laughs> <laughs> she will eat, she will eat, John. She will eat, and then I have to, I did it yesterday. She will look at it and she'll say, you, you're really not going to eat this, are you? And I'll look at well, it. Well, there were two I, of them. See, 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 see. She, she <laughs> thinks, she thinks. Yeah, no, no, no. We're yes. not talking about those two. We're talking about that that strawberry, that that uh, cheese stick, cheesecake. Oh, cheesecake! Yes. Yeah, oh, yes. That's in the. It was half of it, so she ate half of it, and then she saved half of it because I said that is mine, and she says, "Okay, I'm not going to eat it." The next day, she's looking at it. Are you going to eat this? I know what she's saying. So I said, "Oh, I don't even really want that, honey. You can have it. Are you sure?" 
I wanted it. Of course I did. It's good. But being the wonderful man that I am. <laughs> oh, he sacrificed. I sacrificed. That's laying down your life right there. Oh, oh you know? sure. Or cal- <laughs> oh, really? My calories. Right. <laughs> yeah, but really. Loves it. Yeah. But I'm telling you, yeah, and that's yeah. the silly part of who we are. We, um, we don't need a lot of things that people today think they need. It's true. We need each other. And wherever she is, home is. Wherever she is, I'm content. That's a fact. My kids know that. They think we're just two little old people sitting on a couch. <laughs> but they don't know that we've got many years of life together that has culminated in us just sitting to the get together on a mm-hmm. couch. They don't understand that. It's it's some old movie I told you about, John mm-hmm. John, sure the Mexican that. couple yeah. and uh and he's had a rough life. I never even saw the movie. I only saw the end. I just happened to turn the channel to the very end. And because the scene looked like my grandmother's house, it was a home in L.A., but it looked like my grandmother's house. Where he's, I looked at it and I said, I've been there. It looked like my grandmother's house. And so I thought, oh, and there's these two uh, Mexicans. And, well, naturally, you know, I'm, I'm drawn to, to my own culture in many ways. And I see that and I go... And he starts talking. He says, "He says in Spanish, he says, um, can I have some coffee? And that was my dad and my mom. All of a sudden, I'm seeing my dad and my mom, cafecito, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and mama would, in Spanish, would say, here's your cafecito. I, I saw that. I, that's how I grew up. And so I'm just culturally drawn into that emotional moment. But I told Maria about this. She wasn't in the room. But I told her because it, 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 he'd gone through... A lot of bad in his life, a lot of pain. And she sits down and they have a cup of coffee together, which is us and which is my parents. And he says, we've had a good life. Mm -hmm. And she says, yeah, honey, we've had a good life. And I said, Mm -hmm. that's me. Mm -hmm. That's my dad. Mm -hmm. That's us. Mm -hmm. We've had a good life. We sit with our coffee and we look at each other. Mm -hmm. It's your cafecito, Papa. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I say, yeah. It's us, John. So when you have that, Israel's just a cherry on top right, of that. Right. It, and thank God for it. I've been what twenty seven, twenty seven visits so to Israel. Been, yeah. been to India. I've been I've been around the world, but I am home when I'm with her. Mm-hmm. And that's what God said, right? The two shall become one. Yeah. Where you live, I will live. Your people will be my people. Mm-hmm. Your God shall be my God. That's us. Mm-hmm. That's us. We understand that. That's us. And I think that's God's design for marriage. For us at the very end, as we're going a little old and a little more feeble and, and counting each step as we walk down to make sure we're not rolling down. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we don't want to land. It's true. Oh, it's <laughs> too so hard. true. Um, and helping each other to walk. And uh, that's what it's all about. That's all. It, that's, I saw a picture of an old couple who were were they're about to both go home to die, but they were they were isolated in a room, mm-hmm. and old old couple, ninety something, but they had their hands reached out across yes. the room holding hands. This old couple, you know, mm-hmm. and I turned to me and I said, "That's us. Mm-hmm. That that would be us. My children know that. That if Daddy is going home, Mama's going to be sitting right next to him. They know that. Same with me. They know that." If mama has to stay there, then daddy's going to stay there too. Because that's us. Mm-hmm. And that's, yeah. I don't know a better life than that. Right. I don't. I don't. Oh, that's so heartfelt but and amazing too. Uh, may I ask you guys just some random questions as we kind of wrap uh, things not? up? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, just a couple, few random questions. So where would your favorite place, what is your favorite place to spend time? I mean, yeah, I know you probably answered it already. But what would be your favorite place to spend time together? That's that's a difficult one. It really is. Where do you like to be, Mama? Um, it depends on the season. If it's if it's cold, that we may want to be in one place. If it's a warm, another place. We've been in a lot of places, John. Yeah, that's hard. But if you said, where would you like to be right now? I don't. We we have liked we have liked New York. In the winter, we have liked New York in, in December. Winter, yes. In the winter, we put on warm jackets and go to coffee shops mm-hmm. and 
and go and eat Italian, unbelievably good Italian. <laughs> so we love New York in the winter. Um, Hawaii has been sweet to go on vacations where we can kind of rest and take a walk. We take a what a couple mile walk in the morning and go up uh, on a walkway to a coffee shop that that she and I know about at a at a hotel, yes. and we'll sit there and have a sweet and drink coffee and just visit <laughs> about our children. It's usually our kids that we talk about, you know. So I would say Hawaii. We love Israel. Mm-hmm. Maria and I will go to Israel and. <clears throat> And now we can go to Tacos Luis. Yes. You know, mm, <laughs> yes, you can get burritos. <laughs> <laughs> get yeah. burrito pasta. Uh, we love to go to Israel together. Um, San Luis Obispo, on occasion, we'll go with our friends Randy and Jeanette Walls and spend two days, three days there and just relax and go to coffee shops and just spend time with our mm-hmm. friends. We, we like that. I'd like to go to Javier's. Marine, I'd like a place called Javier's in... Uh, is it Corona Mama, Corona Del Mar? Yes. <laughs> uh, it's, it's this Mexican restaurant that has become special to us. We've celebrated anniversaries there. We've taken our children sure, sure. there. Uh, I, I like Javier's. It's, it's got exceptionally good Mexican food, uh, so I like to do that. Um, what other things, Mom? I think you hit it. Basically, one of them you mentioned is staying home and just sitting on the couch. Yeah, right? we got to get out every once in a while. <laughs> of God course, knows we that. do. You know, but but when we're out, it's you, it, it'll be like that. It, you know, yeah. For us too, John. This may be interesting to you, maybe not. I love being with my girl, but we're very social, so we like to go with our friends' mm-hmm. places. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, you know, just this last Monday, Marie had a meeting in uh, Orange County and with Jeanette mm-hmm. uh, Walls, and so Randy and I met him and uh, went to... We went to uh, to eat uh, uh, Italian at Italian uh, uh, Maggiano's. Oh, yeah. Maggiano's yeah. Italian mm-hmm. food. So, we, you know, so we like to be with our friends, like to hang around with our friends and, and all. We, we will do that. Um, you know, our life is very orderly. I, I, I haven't had... Uh, this could sound weird. But it's true. I haven't had a vacation, a real vacation. In so many years, I don't even know. I don't even know the last time I had a vacation. It's been that many years. Because every time I go someplace, it's to minister. And if I find a few, uh, a day or two that, that Marie and I can be together, that it's not ministry-oriented, that's very unusual. And so that's, that's something I'm thinking we, we need to start doing together. I mean, I used to have men's retreats every year on our anniversary weekend, <laughs> every year, because that's when we could get the place that we needed mm-hmm. to go to. And, um, I, I, you know, for years, for years, we didn't celebrate anniversaries because of that. Mm-hmm. And, and you name it, you name the holidays that people are used to having, the Christmas holidays, the Easter holidays, you can name any of them. We work. We've always been working. I've always done what God called me to do. And, and it's no complaint. It's, it's made us who we are. It's no complaint. Mm-hmm. It's just a fact. So I'm thinking now uh, it may be time for me to try and carve out some time for us to really vacation. Mm-hmm. Maybe we will. Maybe. You <laughs> never know. <laughs> okay, here's, uh, and we'll wrap it up with this question here. So do you guys have favorite song or songs that are you guys? Yes. Can you name a few? Unchained Melody. Oh. Unchained Melody is the song that's going to be Righteous, played at my funeral. Righteous mm-hmm. Brothers. Mm-hmm. I was in a, I was, I had a men, um, uh, memory, memory loss. Yes. And it was, it was real bad. And they put me in a, a CAT scan room, is that what it's called? That machine? Yes. I can't they remember. Put you in a, they, they, anyway, they, you could rem, no, you can't. You could remember they put you in a tube. They put me in uh, a, like tube, a tube, like a tube, a CAT scan, CAT scan, and they didn't know what was wrong with me. And I, I, I was in this tube, and they said we're going to play music for you, and the music is supposed to, you know, soothe you. So what do you want to hear? We've got this array of that. I said, 60s music, you know, 60s music would be fine. They said, okay, so I'm laying there in a CAT scan, and I'm still not recovered from my memory loss. I'm, I'm just, it, they could, it could be very severe. I went into 
and into amnesia. I mean, I had total, total loss of memory. The only person I knew was Marie. The only person I would know around me was her, you know, and she had to come more than once, take me by the arm to, to, to try and help me recover. And I was hospitalized and all kinds of things with this. And I, I'm, I'm good now because uh, the Lord was gracious to be able to help to prescribe the kind of medication that actually has helped me. I haven't lost my memory in many years now, but this one time was, it was new and uh, they put me in the tube and they played 60s music and they played Unchained Melody. And I got so emotional mm. hearing that song mm. that they had to pull me out of the tube. And the woman said to me, she said, because they talked to you, she said, we have to pull you out of the tube, Mr. Rosales, because there's something disturbing you very badly. Well, it was the song. That's our song. And uh, I, have, I have a whole catalog of songs that, yeah. that, that I, I will say this reminds me. I've got thousands of songs that are my musical background. And you know this about me. I'll tell you, oh, that song, this song. Because my whole life is a musical catalog. Yes. But the song that if you ask Marie what is our song is uh, Unchained Melody. And uh, the second one is You Needed Me. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's her. Mm -hmm. She needed me. Mm -hmm. She did. So those are our songs. Oh, that's uh, oh, sweet. <clears throat> I'm not choked up or anything right now, you guys. <laughs> Do you guys you're have, easy to choke I know. <laughs> Even just the other day we were talking, right? Yeah. We were just sharing something. Just when very I said you're fired, you cried. I cried. It's <laughs> terrible. Yora, they call me uh, Yorono. El Yorono, right? <laughs> you know, Pastor, uh, do you and Marie have a life verse that centers around your marriage? A life verse that you have for her? Anything I like have that? a life verse that applies to her. And people won't understand this one once I say it. <laughs> but it is my life verse that I applied all of my life, which includes um, being a good man for my wife. And it's I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. That is my life verse. You know. And it works in our marriage, too. Mm -hmm. It does. You guys, this has been a great time. Uh, and I want to thank you guys for transparency that you shared a little and, more open huh yeah <laughs> and i th i'm i'm thinking that people are going to enjoy this this was a we'll good, see. A good session watch. right <laughs> you guys got to watch <laughs> yes. uh, yes. and so thank you guys and we we'll always close pastor and marie with uh, a word that you'd like to speak to the church anything you'd like to say before we close we love we love our church we love our people uh very very much very committed to our people and um, trying to make decisions about this, this COVID, trying to make decisions that take into consideration what is best for our, for our, our fellowship. I miss, I miss them a lot. Mm. I really, you know this, I miss them a lot. I, I, I miss being able to even just look at them, you know, and, and, uh, that's kind of, that's my love language, you know, is to be able to just go out and see somebody because I don't have to talk to someone to love them. You know, I'm that way. You know, all I have to do is see my children, just see them, mm. and I feel good. Don't even have to talk to them. And so when I look out and see the church, it makes me feel at peace. So I miss my church, and I miss my people that, that, that at one time called me pastor. I miss them. Uh, I especially miss them right now with this this COVID and, and all of that. So I, I want I I want uh, I want to see them again, and I hope that we're able to soon. And um, I hope they remember us because we remember them. Mm -hmm. And so that would be my my word to them. Thank you, Church. Uh, thank you, Pastor David and Marie. Thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you guys soon. God bless you. Amen.